Hello everyone, welcome to this material characterization course. In the last class, we just looked at how to use X-ray diffraction in determining the crystallite size effect and also the effect of strain in the lattice. And also we have looked at the method of separating these effects by Williamson Hall's plot. And today's class, we will look at some of the uh, fundamental applications of X-ray diffraction. I will briefly discuss about the basic principles of each of these applications and beyond that uh, the we have to look into uh, much more details in the uh, any specialized course because in a general characterization course I will not get into the details of uh, uh, the methodology which we are adopting and I will discuss the basic principles of for example, crystal structure determination as well as the phase identification and also a stress measurements. So, these things we will look at in the class. Probably in the later uh, classes, I will solve some problems uh, using these techniques in one of the tutorials if it required. So, first and uh, foremost important thing is the crystal structure determination. So, uh, the most common uh, method of application of this uh, electro, I mean uh, X-ray diffraction is determining the crystal structures. The simplest structure being the cubic crystal structures which we will use for uh, indexing them. So, the, the first step is to find out the relation between So, this is the uh, Bragg law, you can rearrange this equation like this and if you look at the plane spacing equation for the cubic system, it is d is equal to a divided by square root of h square plus k square plus l square and uh, combining these two, we can write something like this. So, once you have uh, this relation, then we can use this relation to index this cubic pattern. We will see how we will do it. Thank you. 
So, what I have written is the, the sum h square plus k square plus l square that is s is always an integral and uh, lambda square by 4 a square is a constant for a any one pattern. Then the problem of indexing the pattern of a cubic substance is one of the finding set of integers s which will yield a, a constant quotient. So, we can we can write for a simple cubic So, you have <coughs> with this rule, we can form this uh, a kind of uh, selection rule for the cubic uh, system and you, you, you cannot choose integers like this because this sum will not will add up to these numbers. So, you can exclude them and by this we can simply index this uh, h k l planes from the sin squared theta. In fact, you can make a table uh, out of this sin squared theta versus uh, this kind of a possible h k l plane for a cubic system. And similarly, you can use some other set of values for tetragonal system. So, the sin squared theta must obey this this is a relation for a tetragonal system. We will see how this is going to help us where So, where you have a is equal to lambda square by 4 a square plus c is equal to lambda square by 4 c square are constants and then now we have to find out this values using this kind of uh, method.
So, A and C will give you a lattice parameters. So, what I have written here is in order to find the constants A and C which will give the lattice parameters, the value of A is obtained in this manner from H k 0 lines. You put L equal to 0 then your sin squared theta should satisfy this condition and then the permissible values are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8 that kind of a combination. So, now you write So, what I have written is these are the permissible values for this condition. Therefore, the H k 0 lines must have sin squared values in the ratio of this integers and A will be some number which is 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 by 5, 1 by 8 times the sin squared theta values of this lines. So, that is how you uh, find out the value of A and similarly you will be able to find the values of C also.
So, C is obtained from the other lines on the pattern and the use of sin squared equation in this form sin squared theta minus A into H square plus K square which is equal to C L square. So, I will repeat C is obtained from the other lines that means uh, other than H k 0 lines on the pattern and use the sin squared equation in the form sin squared theta minus A into H square plus K square is equal to C L square and the differences represented by this equation that is the left hand hand side of this equation are set up for various assumed values of H and K in an attempt to find a consistent set of C L square. In fact, you can form a table and which must be in the ratio of 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on. So, from there the C value can be found out. Once these values So, once these values what we are mentioning here is found out C can be calculated. So, that is how uh, it goes with the tetragonal system. Now, we will look at uh, other system
So, you have for a hexagonal system the sin square theta relation is like this sin square theta is equal to a into h square plus h k plus k square plus c l square, where a and c are constants, where a is equal to lambda square by 3 a square and c is equal to lambda square by 4 c square. And similar to what we have seen in this tetragonal system, we will have the permissible values in hexagonal system like for h square plus h k plus k square values are 1, 3, 4, 7, 9, etcetera. Again, you can make a table and then find out this constant in a similar manner. For the other crystal systems, the, the sin squared theta relations will have more number of constants, for example, monoclinic and uh, triclinic system, then the calculations procedures becomes little elaborate and uh, we need some kind of a program is programming is required to find out all those things. So, this is a basic uh, idea behind uh, using the sin squared uh, theta values to indexing the uh, simple uh, crystal systems. And one more thing which I have not mentioned, how accurately we will be able to measure this sin squared theta is again depending upon the system of diffractometer we operate and there are set of procedures in the literature how to correct the sin theta value and after that these kind of calculations are carried out. In fact, I will show you in the laboratory how some of these uh, uh, calculations are done with the uh, interface of a software, you directly get all the uh, indexed pattern readily available. And these are some of the uh, basic aspects of indexing uh, the crystal systems. So, I will just move on to the, the next application called a phase identification, <coughs> the, which is another very important application of X-ray diffraction. For example, if you have uh, a material which has a mixture of two, three phases, so how this phase is identified through X-ray diffraction that we will see with a, a simple case study. So, what I have written here, the, the quantitative analysis by diffraction is based on the intensity of diffraction pattern of a particular phase in the mixture of phases, because we are interested in identifying the phase in a multi-phase system, more than one phase system. So, the, the basic idea is the quantitative analysis is based on intensity of diffraction pattern from the particular phase in a mixture of phases. 
So, what is the next step? What is this intensity? It depends on that is what we have to write now. So, the, the intensity in turn depends upon the concentration of the phase of the interest in the mixture. So, these three points are important. So, the relationship between the intensity and the concentration is not generally linear. So, then it, it depends upon what? It depends upon the mass absorption coefficient of that mixture which itself will vary as a function of concentration. So, it is not uh, a straightforward here. So, in order to look at the uh, possibility of identifying the phase using the X-ray diffraction, we have to keep these three, three points and also the uh, mass absorption coefficient of the mixture and, at, and its variation as a function of concentration also to be considered. So, to find out the relation between the intensity and the phase concentration of the phase, the starting point is the intensity expression. So, this is uh, a familiar equation to us because this is what uh, the intensity, the final intensity of uh, X-ray diffraction is expressed. We have gone through the, uh, the meaning of each term in the earlier class, but this is the a standard pattern for the uh, powder specimen. We can write uh, intensity.
So this is a general expression for an intensity diffracted by a powder specimen. You have this But what you have to remember is the expression what we have written is for a pure substance we will write This expression is applied only to a pure substance, but our interest is to find out the phase in a mixture. For example, if you take alpha beta mixture, so then this expression need to be written in the other form. So this expression has to be rewritten in this form for a, a particular phase of interest for example intensity alpha is equal to K1 multiplied by C alpha by mu m. The intensity must be multiplied by C alpha that is a volume fraction of that phase of interest to allow for the fact that the diffracting volume of alpha in the mixture is less than it would be if the specimen were pure alpha. So in order to take care of that you have to multiply that expression by C alpha and then we have to calculate this. So now let us write uh, what is the meaning of this expression.
So, with respect to this uh, expression k is constant the value of k 1 is uh, unknown because i naught that is uh, incident intensi intensity of x ray is generally unknown, but this is unimportant because if the ratio of i alpha to the intensity of the some standard reference line is formed. If you can use the ratio between i alpha and to a standard reference line, then this th these things can be ignored. So, there are three methods in general. One is external standard method, a line from pure alpha is used where you have direct comparison method, a line from another phase in the mixture is used. The third internal standard method where a foreign material is mixed with the specimen. So, there are three methods by which you can do the uh, phase identification in an X-ray diffraction using this concept and uh, we will just look at one of the important and uh, very frequently used uh, method to find out the phase fraction and identification that is called direct comparison method. We will take up and then we will look at it.
Okay, what I have uh, written here is, suppose if you have uh, a two phase mi mixture uh, where for, for example, you take uh, a gamma and alpha in a mixture in general. So, the you can write this intensity equation in two forms, one depend on I mean theta, H k L and the kind of substance that is R which is completely uh, substance dependent and this is a substance independent term and then you can write this general expression for these two individual phases in a mixture for in this case I gamma is equal to K 2 R gamma C gamma divided by 2 mu m and I alpha is equal to K 2 R alpha C alpha divided by 2 mu m. The take the ratio of this which is R gamma C gamma by R alpha C alpha. Now, the C gamma by C alpha can therefore be obtained from the measurement of I gamma by I alpha and then calculation of R gamma and R alpha can be obtained by the uh, lattice constants and crystal structures and so on. Once we find that uh, C gamma by C alpha ratio, the value of C gamma can be found out from this relation C gamma plus C alpha is equal to 1. So, like that even if you have one more phase, you can find out this from this direct uh, comparison method. <coughs> so, like that uh, you can make use of this uh, X-ray diffraction technique for identifying the uh, phase and calculating the phase fraction. And uh, another important application is uh, uh, stress measurements. I will again discuss the, the very basic principles of uh, stress measurements in the next class. Thank you.